Hi, in the last tutorial, we have modeled two dimensional array using one dimensional array of pointers and three one dimensional integer arrays. That was a three cross three two dimensional array. But in this tutorial, we are going to model a two dimensional array which is totally dynamic. That means we are going to create the two dimensional array using array of pointers and integer arrays which again are going to be created dynamically. Even we will create the array of pointers dynamically. So here you can see that in the previous example, uh, this one dimensional array of pointer was fixed. It was a compile time allocation with three elements and also these three arrays X, Y and Z, they were also fixed allocation. That means they were initialized with three elements uh, during the compilation period. Now we are going to model a two dimensional array that's totally dynamic. We will be asking for the number of rows and number of columns in runtime and using those number of rows and number of column values we will be allocating the two dimensional array dynamically in the memory using the malloc function so here we go so what i need first is to declare a pointer to pointer for holding the base address of the array of pointer and then we need two variables n rows that's the number of rows and n calls that's the number of columns and i'm going on asking the values to input enter so we are done with the input of number of rows and number of columns and then now what we are allocating here is the array of pointer so the array of pointer the name for the array of pointer is pointer to pointer we are casting the return value for malloc as it is a pointer to pointer so here we go with the malloc now we need to allocate the array of pointers with number of elements that's going to hold the base address for each row so it's going to be equal with the number of rows. So it's n rows multiplied with size of integer star. Now each element of the array of pointer should be integer star that should hold the base address of each row. It's the total number of rows that we need to allocate. Say for example, if the input for n rows is five, and this is for six, then we are intent to allocate five cross six two dimensional array. So the pointer P, the base to the array of pointer should point a one dimensional array that is having five elements, each integer pointer. Now this is going to point the first row. This is going to point the second row. So the rows are going to be allocated later on, but we are allocating this array of pointers first here so n rows is 5 and each element is actually integer pointer so size of integer pointer comes here so if the size of integer pointer is 8 so this is actually 40 bytes so we are done with the allocation of the array of pointers that should be done first and we did that here now if the allocation fails we should consider this seriously then we should exit the program we could have given a message as well so we are done with allocating the one dimensional array of pointers dynamically now what we need is to allocate each row so i'm declaring a, an integer variable in order to scroll through the elements of array of pointers so i equals to zero i less than n rows i plus plus so for each element of array of pointers what we are doing we are allocating rows and assigning it to the corresponding element of the array of pointers so the first row is created dynamically should be created dynamically and, and the base address of the first row should be assigned to the first element of the array of pointer and the number of column goes here so if the n calls is 6 so 6 multiplied with 4 that's 24 that's 24 bytes row is assigned to p0 that means the first element of the array so you can just go ahead and draw this block diagram so here we have allocated the array of pointers say the user has given five for number of rows so there are five elements in this array of pointer and each is pointer this is p0 p1 p2 p3 and p4 so star of p plus i is actually the ith element of this array so i equals to zero we are here at the first element so what we are doing we are allocating the one dimensional array with the number of columns so if it is six so 24 bytes are going to be allocated now the base address of this 24 byte is returned and we are casting it with the integer pointer because each column is an integer so this is allocated from the memory 7000 so 7000 is kept here 
So this is actually P0 for the first time or in general it's the ith element of the array p. So p plus i star is p third bracket i, they are same. So this is going to point here and then the for loop goes on. So i plus plus takes i to the next element and in that case again the malloc function is fired and it, it is allocating 24 bytes and the base address is returned and the base address is kept here. So each row is each each element of the array of pointer is going to point one dimensional array of size n calls. So in this way we are just modeling the two dimensional array and the rest of the thing is just same. So this is the two dimensional array and in order in order to access a particular cell of this array we can use this pointer notation and this is going to be equivalent with uh, p third bracket i third bracket j. That's the equivalency and I have discussed about this in the last tutorial. You can go and see that. So this is how we actually allocate the two-dimensional array using array of pointers dynamically. And this array of this two-dimensional array is totally dynamic. So because we have taken the number of rows and number of columns from keyboard and that's in runtime. So now going ahead we can use this pointer notation for accessing each and every cell of this array. And we can pass the base address to the function and the number of rows and number of column information to the function and from the function we can still access the cell of this two-dimensional array. We may need this allocation frequently in our program so instead of writing it in the main function we may write a function that's going to allocate the two-dimensional array on supplying the number of rows and number of columns and return back the base address to the array of pointer. So that would be convenient. So I'm going ahead and writing a function for allocating two-dimensional array using the dynamic allocation technique. The function is supposed to receive the number of rows and number of columns and we have declared the base address as pointer to pointer to the array of pointer. And after allocating the function is going to return the base address to the array of pointers. So the return type is pointer to pointer. So this code that we have written here that was allocating the array two-dimensional array dynamically it should be actually here in the function so after allocating the two-dimensional array we should return the base address so using the return keyword I'm returning back P that's the base address to the array of pointers and if we return back this P to the caller obviously the caller can access the whole array that's the that's the requirement only the base address and obviously the number of rows and number of columns that's available here so we can call now this allocate function and pass this in rows and in calls there and obviously that allocate is going to allocate the two-dimensional array now if we just write another function to input the values from keyboard in this function what we need is to pass the base address that's pointer to pointer and then integer number of columns uh, I'm sorry number of rows and number of columns that information has to be passed in order to iterate the whole array we need these end rows and end calls. So I'm writing a nested for loop in order to input the values to each of the cell. Here the address of the ith -th column has to be given. So it could be given using the array notation. I can just write p third bracket i and third bracket j. But instead of using this I'm using the pointer notation. So in case of pointer notation we should go on and write in this in this way. So p plus i star plus j. This is the address of the i throw j -th column, the cell at the index i throw j -th column. So if we had given this, then it's going to indicate the content. So this is the address. And if we derefer that, we get the content. So here we need to supply the address. So dereferencing, final dereferencing that star should not be prefixed with this. So this is how we actually get the values from input console and then we can write another function to print the values back to the console that is again going to receive the base address and the number of rows and the number of columns the for loop will remain same so I'm just copying it from here instead of scanning we need only to print now so here we go with the printf statement that's going to print the content of the ith row and jth column so percent 4d 
or maybe we can increase the space a bit more and then p plus i star plus j and then star comes here if you don't know how this expression goes on then you can just go to the previous uh, tutorial where I have discussed about this expression okay so that's all we know we need to provide a new line after printing each row so that the next row is printed on the next line okay that's all we are done now after allocating what we are doing we are just calling the input function input values passing p n rows and n columns and the, then we are just calling the print function to print the content of each cell okay I'm going ahead and running this program you can see that it's asking for the number of rows so let it be 4 and number of columns let it be 3 so now it is asking for the values I need to input 12 values altogether so we are in the last row now you can see that the values are taken into the array and then it is they are printed back into the console so the two-dimensional array is allocated dynamically in this way now the final thing is that you need to write a nested for loop in order to deallocate the allocated space in order to reduce the leaks memory leaks so that no memory leaks are there so I'm just giving this as a task so that you can write this deallocate function that's going to take the base address and number of rows and number of columns and it's going to deallocate the memory using the free function so let it be a task and please do that if you face any problem you can just put it in the discussion forum I will I will respond to that thank you